Okay, Frank. This one is for you. Uh, without getting into a long movie, um, I'm going to show you how I balance my telescope. I think that's what you asked. Um, first of all, it's a Paramount ME mount, and I have a Celestron 14 inch edge telescope here. And I actually have cradles. I think I'll take the camera off here and kind of move it around as I speak. Okay. Um, Paramount Emmy. And these are the cradles I'm talking about that hold the scope to the to the Versa plate right here. Actually, this is a plate that came with the cradles, but it's attached to the Versa plate with screws, not a dovetail. And also the scope came with a dovetail, but I don't use it because I think it is too flexible. It's only got some really very tiny screws and the, the, uh, the dovetail that comes with this 14 inch is very thin. So I opted to get scope cradles right off the, the bat and you can see them. All right, the other thing I did is I mounted all my power supplies on the scope. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to feed all these wires through the scope and have them come out here because that's where they would normally come out. I have the minimum. I have a 110 volt wire here and then I have a USB cable right here. That's it. If you stick all those other wires in there, what's going to happen is they're going to twist around each other and they're going to cause a bind and they're going to cause it, make the scope work a little harder or a little easier. And when you do a meridian flip, it really gets tight. So uh, I opted to put one power cable in a power strip and that feeds all the power supplies for the Gemini rotator, which I have over here. There's the Gemini. And to the QSI 683 WSG right here. And of course, the KISS focuser. And you can see how it mounts on there. The lighting isn't going to be too good because of the one thing. And then I also have... Um, some uh, micro touch a micro touch focuser for the mirror if i ever have to really adjust the mirror but really once it's adjusted and you lock it down with these locks and you've got everything like the um you've got the gemini such that the uh the camera is in the mid-range of the focus of the gemini you really never have to move the mirror again okay and then i have a wireless uh micro touch uh, receiver that drives All right, this I don't know why it shut off, but motor. I'm going to start again. I mean, I'll continue. All right. I have a Lost Mandy dovetail mount attached to the, uh, the rear end of the scope here and also to the front. It comes with these clamp, these, uh, these spacers that are curved, although the back one doesn't have the exact curve it should have. Okay. Now, this is the important thing. And I, I added this here, I made this. I'll get back a little bit so you can get the whole thing in the focus. It's got a counterweight here and a counterweight here. And they're a little dusty. I haven't used the scope in a while because of the weather here in Arizona. But what happens here is this scope is hard to balance, especially if you have stuff like this on one side. Uh, you have the focuser, I mean the focuser. This is actually a rotator focuser here. and you know, like here's another piece of equipment, the uh, stepper motor for the mirror focuser and other stuff, you know, like this receiver, it all adds up. It adds up and uh, what happens is the scope is heavier on this side. We think not much, but it is. And I have a plate that holds this. So you can see that there's a little bit of excess weight here. So to dynamically balance the scope so that you can move it in each direction and it will stay still, you're going to have to make something like this because it's almost impossible to balance this scope completely unless you have this. Now, I have the scope optimally balanced to start with by sliding this big plate here on the scope top plate here, the Versa plate. And 
I have this set so that with that camera and rotator focuser, it's pretty balanced, but it's never perfectly balanced because you, you have a lot of stuff here. And also the mirror has weight. And if you move that mirror, you're gonna shift the, uh, the center of gravity. So you wanna get everything balanced so that on this axis, the axis of the counterweights, the camera and other stuff back there, and there's also another little connection box here, that balances with the front of the scope, which is much lighter, of course, but it's not perfect. So you can take this dovetail mount and you can slide this back and forth. And then you can move these weights in and out to dynamically balance the rest of the scope. Now, if you'll notice, and you probably can see it, I'll turn this sideways, I better not. The distance from here to here is shorter than the distance from here to here. So this gives this weight more leverage. And consequently, you can, you can balance it. Now, I kept these at a minimum. I sawed them off when I found uh, the right distance to have these counterweights out. But I still have about another two inches of adjustment here on either side. And I can also put longer rods in if I change something which changes the dynamics of the, uh, the balancing of the scope. So what I'll show you is how it reacts. So I'm gonna put this camera back on the mount, the uh, tripod, and it should be in focus. So now, what I'm gonna do now, oh, I wanna show you one other thing that's kind of important that I did. Some people asked about it, and that is this thing. They asked, what is this? Well, this is a rod. Actually, it's a channel, a U-channel. You can see the wires here. That is mounted to the VersaPlate. And what it does is it feeds the wires for the guide camera and through to the, uh, and the, uh, and the imaging camera, and also uh, the, um, the rotator. It feeds it through here. I, I'm sorry, I said the rotator. That's not true. That's down here. Okay, so what happens is these wires are looped here, and this is the center of rotation. This is the axis of the scope. This allows the rotator to move the camera around without catching and dragging the wires. They just kind of turn on this point. So that's kind of a handy thing to do. I noticed some other people asked me about that and they, uh, they incorporated that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release on the Paramount, you actually have to unscrew a couple of screws uh, right at the right ascension and declination to disengage the gears. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna disengage this gear. can see that the scope can be adjusted on the altitude. I have a piece of tape over here because it's important to keep that screw from moving. And then also I'm going to, you'll notice when I release it, the scope pretty much stays where it's supposed to. And I'm going to disengage this gear. And you can see that it's moving in right ascension now. So actually if I want, this is right, it's pointing west now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna focus on your object and then the scope is gonna move like that through right ascension. Now, I'm gonna turn this around as if I was looking east. I gotta be careful I don't hit the stops because I forget which direction this moves in. And of course, usually I'd have the, uh, the roof open. I don't wanna bang it against, okay, so I'm doing it the right way. Make a meridian shift. This scope, it would do it automatically. So, I'm trying to get uh, the counterweights in the right position. Okay, so now we're pointing east with the scope because that's east, and you can see that if I let the scope go, it should stay there. It's, but I do bias it just a little bit. Actually, I should have it a little bit to counterweight down this way, just a hair. Paramount, I mean, this tells you you don't have to do that. But I just moved it about maybe three-eighths of an inch. Now, because it's dynamically balanced, I can point the scope anywhere. 
let it go, and it'll stay there. If I point it down here, it'll stay there. Because I have these weights, I should I say I have that weight that's over there, and I'll, I'll take the camera off again. Because of this weight here, being forward or backward, it balances the scope. It's hard to move this with one hand this way. Okay. Now, why do I have, I got to turn that just a little bit. Why do I have these? Because of the weight of all this apparatus one side, it actually shifts the center of gravity of the scope. So this allows me to balance the scope this way. And then this, I can slide this on the dovetail, gives me that final adjustment front to back. So I'll put that back on the tripod again. I know I'm not explaining this too well, but I had to dream that up. And there we go. So you can see that no matter where I leave the scope, it'll stay. Sometimes I have to just tweak the counterweights just a little bit, especially if I do a meridian flip. I always like to have it biased. This says you don't have to do it. I put a little bit of pressure on the gear, so when the scope is being lifted, there's a little pushback on it, so it always stays in mesh. Now, when you do a meridian flip, what's going to happen is the scope's going to go. I got to watch this, although I'm pretty sure I cleared it. Yeah, I got to watch that one spot. I don't. I don't usually do this with the roof closed, but it's it's hotter than hell out there, believe me. And I don't do any imaging in the summer because it's so hot out here in Arizona. So now I've done a meridian flip, and of course, I'm on the, you would be, you'd start here, of course, and then you would be traveling across here like this. So. like that. Now, like I said, I can leave the scope go. It doesn't move. It doesn't fall that way. It doesn't fall that way. That's because of these two weights and how they balance the scope this way. It's a very simple setup. You buy a dovetail that goes across here. You can buy those readily. And then you buy one of the dovetail slides that you would mount a um, whatever on um, there another finder scope or something else and then i put a weight here this weight balances as well as these weights but once i find that sweet spot but it still wants to go one way then i adjust these weights in or out and then it's totally dynamically balanced in all directions so if i leave it there it stays if i leave it here it stays. And you can see that the scope really shifts its center of gravity when you when you go through these movements. You know, if I was going to image in the northwest, I'd have to have the scope balanced in that direction. And now you see it's just drifting just a tiny bit. That's because I went over to the west side. So what I'd have to do is just move the counterweight out about there maybe not even a half an inch. Now it's totally balanced in that direction. I, I manually come out and adjust that after I do a meridian flip, just so that there is a little push on the gear. So actually, it, it pushes it up and, the, and the, the motor's trying to drive it this way. The, the weight pushes it against the gears, not with the gears, otherwise it would, it would jerk. So, when I store the scope, You can see that, I'll put it there, it'll stay. It's totally dynamically balanced in all directions, no matter which side you put it on. Now, to show you that it's that balanced, here's the lens cover. If I put that on, the scope's gonna be way out of balance. That much weight, of the lens cover, which weighs probably a few ounces, is enough, here, watch, to put
push the scope down. You could weigh this, I've never weighed it, but I would say it probably weighs no more than about maybe three ounces. But that's enough to, to put some kind of a bias on the scope. So what I do, I mean, that's how I, I made that. Put that on. No, actually, I'll put it on. I'm going to put the scope in its storage position right now, and that is with the, the optical tube assembly in a horizontal position like that. First, I'm going to get it in the right ascension. And I'll re-engage the gear. Put that back in. Then I'll do it. I'll get the OTA horizontal. And I'll re-engage the gear. Okay, I got that back. Now, when I store this scope, and I'm going to move the camera back as far as I can. I have constructed a box that I lovingly call the sarcophagus. And it's made out of a styrofoam with a, the aluminum backing on it. It's insulating material. So, I have them marked because So it goes here. And I'll, I'll show you one other thing here. When I built the observatory, I made it so that the concrete pier, I can put the lens cover back on now because the scope is locked in position. There's a hole in the floor there around the concrete pier. And I've done that so that, of course, the pier does not touch the floor, so there's no vibration transmitted to the to the pier when the scope when you walk up on this deck so i'll put that back on the uh all right and then i find the next piece that goes on here i believe this is the top yeah that's the top so we're just going to get it out of the way for now and then this one is the east so that one goes here This one is the north, so that one goes here. Okay, so that one obviously has got to be the south. The south goes here. Okay. I think I, I slugged up here. Maybe not. No, that's east. this part in a long time. So I'm, I'm doing a Joe Biden here. That's correct. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay. All right. This goes here. This goes here. That goes there. And I just use bungee cords. And these big paper clips. So then what I do is I have these clips over here so I don't have to put a hole. This uh, foam material gets beat up pretty quick. But I've been using this for a couple of years. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the Arizona heat is really brutal and I don't want my scope exposed to those kind of temperatures. It, it gets up to 120 or 30 degrees up in here. But I can keep the scope at 80 degrees easy with a small $125 air conditioner. All right, so I'm gonna put the back on. It goes here. Another couple of bungee cords. Put that one there. This one here. And I'll show you all this when I get it together. But I just want to show you how I get it together. All right. We've got basically a box here. We have the longs. Got another couple of bungee cords around here. We go. These, these two hold. 
hold it together this way. inside of here. So the sarcophagus is now getting in place. And you can see the telescope fits real nice in there. And it's level, you don't see it sticking up. I don't know how well that's going to turn out, but anyway. So then now put that back on. goes on. There it is. More of these uh, big clips. And then of course a lot of square because at the top is a gauge. And oh I got a bungee cord over here. It's rather wore out. The sun eats the I should say the heat the rubber up in these bungee cords but you see this one is getting really stretched it's getting to the point where it has no elasticity in it anymore but I'll put it on here I gotta get some new ones this one is on its way out the, to the garbage bin okay doesn't really have to have much on there so I'll give you a around the world view here so you can see the sarcophagus <laughs> oh King Tut's in there he's all around the scope let's turn that a little bit that way to keep it kind of gets it it's now well, maybe I moved it too much okay. that's good enough now well, I think I pushed it too much so let's push it back here and one other thing I do is I have a thermometer and I have a hole in the side that I push that thermometer in and then right now it's reading you can see it's already reading 100 degrees in here it'll get down to 80 and if I really wanted to force it I can get it down to 70 very easily and I every once in a while I come and check it and I feel this hole here and that's where the air is coming out because you got to have some air to come out otherwise you won't get it to flow okay so I'll put this back on the tripod. Sorry, it's kind of a uh, ad hoc video. And then what I do is I, because it's so dusty in Arizona, I put this uh, sheet over here and that keeps some of the dust out of the cracks. It keeps the scope pretty dust free. And of course, there's a positive airflow, so any cracks that are in the uh, sarcophagus here, the dust is usually pushed out, pushed out, but there's always some dust coming in from the air conditioner vent. So, that's that. The scope is secured, and... I'm going to move this over so you can see what I do here. I'm going to All right, I'm going to close the front flaps on the These pieces come down so that when I'm pushing the roof off, when I raise them up, I can push the roof off past the telescope. So, I'm going to put those down. So, 
I'm going to stop the camera. This is a downstairs view, and that's where the air conditioning duct is. Goes up through the floor, through the floor joists. There's the air conditioner. I've got to take it. It's been all summer. I got to take that filter out today, and I got to blow it out. It's really, really bad. So I'm going to open this up for a second. And hang on, I got a phone call. <laughs> 